Shannon Doherty says, I believed the reason that I got breast cancer is because I did IVF. This picture and title was splashed all over the tabloids and really sent the fertility community into a panic. So is this true? Does IVF cause breast cancer? Watch this video to learn more. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a double board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinologist helping people build families with IVF for over 20 years. I'm answering my patients' questions about side effects and risks every day. And on a personal note, I did IVF after struggling with secondary infertility for years to help build my own family. So seeing this headline and seeing the fear that it caused my patients hit me a little bit differently. I worried about my patients reading the headlines and not knowing the context. And quite honestly, because of my personal experience, I wanted to revisit the evidence for myself. In this video, we'll go over five main topics. Topic number one, the buzz. What is all of this buzz about Shannon Doherty, IVF, breast cancer, and why was it splashed all over the news? Topic number two, the worry. Let's validate what this concern is. What is the deal with hormones and IVF and breast cancer? Number three, we'll go over the evidence. We've been doing IVF for over 40 years, and there is long-term data that is reassuring, and I want to share it with you. Topic number four, for why this is top of mind. Why are we thinking about this so much? And topic number five, what is next for you? How to get the questions answered for you, what to ask your doctor, and how to move forward with the information that you learn today. Topic number one, the buzz. Shannon Doherty is a celebrity who has been in the news a lot lately, sharing her personal struggles with both breast cancer and history of struggling with fertility treatments like IVF. If you lived and watched TV through the 90s like I did, you know Shannon. Shannon Doherty. You might know her from wildly popular TV shows as Brenda in 90210 or Prue in the TV show Charmed, or you might know her from cult classic movies like Heathers or Mallrats. Shannon Doherty was literally everywhere in the 1990s. More recently, she's known for sharing her struggle with breast cancer in her podcast, Let's Be Clear with Shannon Doherty. She's sharing her struggle as a survivor with stage four breast cancer or breast cancer that has spread to other parts of her body. The reason there's been so much buzz more recently about Shannon Doherty is in her podcast, the Let's Be Clear podcast on her January 9th episode called The Doctor Will See You Now. She is interviewing her doctor, Dr. Pyro, her oncologist who helped her through her whole breast cancer treatment. And they're reflecting on decisions that they've made. And in the discussion where Shannon is talking about why she decided not to go on tamoxifen, uh, they were reflecting on why. So when she finished her first round of treatment with breast cancer and she got the all clear, um, sometimes women with breast cancer, certain types of breast cancer, will go on a medication called tamoxifen to decrease the risk of recurrence. And she decided not to, and so they're reflecting on it. And in this discussion, Shannon says, round um, minute 47, if you want to hear it yourself, she basically says, well, I got my breast cancer diagnosis while I was undergoing IVF treatments. I really thought the IVF treatments caused my breast cancer, and now my breast cancer was gone. I wasn't planning to do IVF again. And her doctor reminded her that she also wanted to keep the options open of maybe conceiving without assistance or naturally. And so she decided not to go back on tamoxifen. So in that episode, what she was really talking about was kind of that decision and sort of you always look backwards and wonder if you make the right decisions. But that one little statement that I thought that the IVF treatments might have caused my breast cancer was pulled out by journalists and just splashed all over the tabloids. And so that is what people have picked up on. And I just want to make sure you realize it's in context of a much deeper discussion. So two things I want to point out as we talk about this buzz. Number one, I have no personal knowledge of Shannon Doherty's medical experience. I'm only talking about what she shared on her podcast, which you can listen to yourself. And number two, just because a celebrity thinks it, it does not make it true. Topic number two, the worry. Listen, you are gonna get bombarded with information like, of course this is wrong. What is Shannon Doherty saying? Look at all the evidence. IVF does not cause breast cancer. And you know, sometimes people get sort of shamed by asking the question, but I validate that worry. Like we have been bombarded with the worry that hormones cause breast cancer basically since the 2000s. So I remember I was in residency um, doing my OBGYN training at University of California in San Francisco when the WHI uh, studies into hormone treatment to prevent heart attacks came out and that's huge 
international study was stopped because they were worried that giving hormones to postmenopausal women might increase the risk of breast cancer. And talk about tabloids, man, that was all over the news. We now know that the results were a little bit overblown and there's a huge generation of women who might have actually benefited from hormonal treatment, kind of getting through those couple of years around perimenopause where they're really struggling with hot flashes and lots of different symptoms, really lost out because people were in so much fear of taking hormones and doctors were even in fear of giving it. This is a whole nother topic, but I just want to validate that the understanding or the worry of hormones related to breast cancer is really embedded in all of us and kind of it makes sense that people ask the question. It's okay to ask the question, but you should get the answer from evidence and kind of really trying to understand what we know today. So before I transition into topic three, which is the evidence, I just wanna make a little bit of a clarity in physiology. So the WHI trials were trying to answer a very specific question. They were looking at postmenopausal women, average age 60, so they'd been out of menopause, hadn't seen estrogen or progesterone in 10 years, and giving them estrogen and progesterone to see if it would prevent cardiac disease. And some of these women had a higher risk or diagnosed with breast cancer, and that's why the trials were stopped. IVF is very different. In IVF stimulation, we are giving gonadotropins, which are actually the same hormones that come from your pituitary gland to talk to your ovaries to recruit eggs. We're giving gonadotropins for two weeks. It's exactly what happens in the body when you're ovulating normally, but just at a higher amount. And then instead of ovulating into your body, we get those eggs out with an egg retrieval. So there are some times in fertility treatments where we give estrogen and progesterone, but this is a totally different population, totally different time of exposure. And the word hormone really just means any substance or chemical that's created from some part of the body and acts on a different part of a body. So yes, we're using hormones with IVF stimulation, but it is very different than what was going on in those WHI trials and the splash of tabloids that came out in the 2000s. It's a nuanced topic, but I do just want you to understand it is different. So topic number three, let's get into the evidence about watching people go through stimulation and following up years later to see if they have an increased risk of breast cancer just because they did IVF in the past. So I have three studies to share and I want to explain them to you, tell you where they were published, and I will put a link to them in the description of this video. So the first one is ovarian stimulation for in vitro fertilization and long-term risk of breast cancer. It was published in JAMA, a well-respected journal in 2016. And in this, almost 20,000 women who got IVF treatment from 1983 to 1995 were compared to almost 6,000 women who did other fertility treatments like intrauterine insemination or Clomid, but not IVF in 12 fertility centers throughout the Netherlands. And they were followed up for years to look at different incidents and whether or not one group had a higher chance of getting breast cancer. The breast cancer risk in the IVF treated group was not significantly different than the general population or in people who did low tech fertility treatment. The cumulative risk of breast cancer in the IVF group was 3%, and the cumulative risk of IVF in the non-IVF but fertility treatment group was 2.9%. I like the study for several reasons. Number one, it's a large group to study, and number two, it's got excellent follow-up in general in the Netherlands and in other European countries. They have such a good system for following people through their medical care. And number three, they were trying to answer a very specific question and isolate a question because one of the baseline risk factors for getting breast cancer is not having children or even being infertile in the first place. And so the fact that they were also comparing people who did IVF for fertility reasons to people who also had infertility but did not do IVF, it's another way to help you feel more comfortable about it in and of itself doing IVF does not increase your risk of breast cancer. 
Another study is IVF and breast cancer, a systematic review and meta-analysis. This was a data collected from eight cohort studies, so putting multiple studies together to get power in numbers. And groups of people who did IVF were compared to groups of people who did not do IVF and evaluating breast cancer risk. And in this, there were over 1.5 million women included in this data collection and pool. A total of almost 15,000 women got breast cancer, and in this multi-year follow-up with a huge pool of numbers, the women who did IVF did not have a higher risk of breast cancer compared to the general population. Third study from Britain is called Fertility Treatment and Breast Cancer Incidents, a meta-analysis published in 2022, it's pretty recent. This collected over 25 studies and pooled over 600,000 patients, and again, no increased risk of breast cancer. So these are three very powerful studies published with big numbers and following people over decades and did not show an increased risk of breast cancer just for doing IVF. Topic number four, I was thinking to myself, why is this so top of mind? Why did this hit an absolute nerve? Yes, it's a celebrity, but what is it about IVF and breast cancer that really got this blowing up through the news cycle? And I thought of a couple of things. A lot of this stuff is just really common. And so you're thinking, oh, well, there must be a link. Number one, IVF is more common. So infertility impacts one in six people worldwide, according to the World Health Organization. And there's more access to care to IVF and people are talking about IVF more. More people are pursuing IVF than they ever have before. Number two, breast cancer is extremely common. So one in eight women will be diagnosed and treated for breast cancer in her lifetime. And number three, women with infertility have a higher risk of breast cancer, meaning breast cancer risk factors also can be associated with people who happen to also have infertility. So there's certain risk factors for breast cancer, it includes older age, family history, smoking, et cetera. But other risk factors are also seen in an infertile population. First pregnancy after the age of 30 is a risk factor for breast cancer. No history of a full term pregnancy in the past is risk for breast cancer and no history of breastfeeding. So if I'm seeing fertility patients in their 30s that are pursuing IVF, these are sometimes women that also just have an increased risk of breast cancer. So it is important to think about this and it makes so much sense that this is top of mind and it makes me think I need to be really talking to my patients not only about, hey, are you up to date with your pap smear, but hey, are you up to date with your screening for breast cancer? Are you doing self breast exams? Is there any reason that you should you know, get a mammogram before we do IVF? And so it's just something to think about and be aware of and it all makes sense why this story hits such a nerve and why it makes sense that people are nervous about hormones, IVF, and breast cancer. And I hope you're taking away from this video, it's okay to have that worry, but I want you to be reassured by the evidence and the years and years of follow-up that we have. So topic number five, you know, talking to your doctor. So part of a fertility checkup, thinking about your options for building your family is also good preconception care. So in addition to thinking about being up to date with your vaccines, if you need them, thinking about your overall health and well-being, prenatal vitamins, think about your screening, think about your most recent pap smear, think about any risk factors for breast cancer that you might have in your family, um, and just talk to your doctor about your overall health and well-being. And it's okay to ask your doctor yourself, like, hey, um, I, I heard this story in the news about Shannon Doherty and IVF, you know, can you tell me a little bit more about the evidence that you know? Hopefully you've gotten this evidence from this video, but I do want you to feel comfortable and confident to advocate for your care ask your questions and please just don't assume everything you read in the tabloids are true. So let's recap. Shannon Doherty in the news with the quote, I think that doing IVF caused my breast cancer. This was a quote taken out of context um, in one of the episodes of her podcast and just because a celebrity thinks it or says it, it doesn't make it true. In this video, we reviewed the buzz, we reviewed why it's okay to have these worries and thoughts. We reviewed a little bit about hormones and what's actually going on with IVF and stimulation. We reviewed the evidence that years of follow-up and huge studies with lots of patients 
did not show an association of doing IVF and having an increased incidence of breast cancer. I hope that you are walking away from this video much more knowledgeable, a little bit more reassured, and with some questions that can help you at your next visit. Like this video if you learned something, comment with questions that you have, be sure and subscribe to the channel so you get my weekly videos all about reproductive health, and as always, wishing you love, luck, and pineapples.